Okay, so now I'm recording and uh, in the uh, event of coronavirus and the fact that we can no longer have the Old Boys Association, Boston Grammar School OBA annual dinner, um, we're going to have to really make do with a, a conversation with the honorary guest speaker, Chris Blakey, um, who's at his home in Corsham. Um, I'm here in the Midlands in a little village of Alderton, uh, but in a few minutes I'm going to take Chris back in time, back to our uh, hometown of Boston in Lincolnshire, uh, and we're going to share some memories about our school days. So Chris, um, this is a remarkable achievement, driving across the whole of Siberia in an old Austin 7. I bet you must be a very proud man. Um, it was a uh, fantastic journey. It was something that uh, I'd thought about for a long time and um, it has uh, completely changed my view um, from a first-hand uh, point of view about what it is actually like in Russia and Siberia. Yes, yeah, so uh, I mean we mentioned this a number of times is, is that people very often have this uh, this view which is uh, clouded by recent events, you know, not to mention the, um, the Novichok incident in Salisbury, which brings me to the, the first point, and that is the extraordinary number of um, coincidences that have happened over the last couple of years in your life, and not the least of which was uh, when we met in the, the church uh, in Corsham. Uh, and that is where that you you came into contact with uh, with a Russian guy who was really quite instrumental in your journey. Yeah, no, absolutely amazing. I mean, part of the film that I put together using the uh, work you've done, I've called the serendipity of the seven, because the old Austin seven, bless it, wherever it's gone with me has opened many doors and allowed me to meet many people who were very, very important. And one of the first was literally um, at the church in Caution when I just turned up because I wanted to buy some sausages, funny enough, and had no money for the car parking. So I'd gone into the church car park and I, as you know, had history in churches. And I went into this church. There was no one around at all. A man came in and took some photos. He went out. He was then stood by Babushka and asking me why I had a Russian flag on his car. And I explained the whole story. And that was that. But he then contacted me later on. And his name is Ilya. And uh, he uh, is involved in a translation business for medical and dentistry. And he was very, very supportive of giving me links and contacts throughout Russia up until uh, it got to, he rang me and said, I've got a couple of weeks, can I come along? And he did. So he was one of your co-pilots in the, in the leg of the journey from uh, Moscow. Um, well, in a few minutes, we're going to be actually looking at the video that you created um, and we're going to be showing it in our old Boston Grammar School assembly room uh, so we can watch that together and, and hopefully uh, a lot of people will join us and uh, share in a, a live watch party on Facebook uh, so that we can, you know, communicate with them. And coincidentally, I've just been... Um, messaging Pete Sharman and I'm going to interview him in much the same way uh, tomorrow afternoon um, and hopefully we'll be able to incorporate some of this into the uh, the total uh, video. So was, was, uh, Pete was uh, like me, he was um, a couple of years uh, ahead of you at Boston Grammar wasn't he, was he not? I think so yes, he wasn't part of my son of Kellogg's. No, no, no. So. 
Uh, so why don't we um, just go over to Boston now and uh, we'll continue talking and you'll be able to, we'll be able to record our little videos at the side of the screen. Uh, but I want to take you to uh, Boston and um, show you some of the things that people will still be able to access um, after um, our conversation and after the watch party. They will still be able to go in uh, to the uh, assembly hall at the school and watch the video that you've uh, made for us all. So I'm going into uh, sharing now and uh, what you should see um, on your screen in a second is my hometown memories of Boston. Can you see that? I certainly can. So it's a picture of Boston Stump. Um, and this is a little application that I've uh, created that other people will be able to go into um, after uh, we've had our watch party. So I'm going to click on the, the picture and that will uh, take us to uh, an aerial view of Boston with the stump. Okay, can you see that okay? I certainly can. Okay, well I know that in your younger days you uh, you probably still have a very good voice, but you were uh, head choir boy, were you not? At Boston? I was head choir boy for quite some years, yes. You were. Well, maybe you would like to actually go inside the stump then for a minute or two um, and listen to some nice choral music. So... Can you see the stump okay inside? Yeah, I'm looking inside now. Yeah, it says aerial view, but it's not. No, it isn't an aerial view, but that's uh, to allow me to click on that and go back to where we were I looking see. at the, the town. So right. this, the town obviously is going to be very familiar with you with, uh, with a lot of memories. I've uh, created this in such a way that I've included some of my memories, which are really not important for this discussion and uh, for today but what we're really talking about is our memories of Boston Grammar School um, and a lot of people who were at, at uh, Boston Grammar with us and they may not like us live in the same area so being able to revisit Boston Grammar virtually uh, might also be interesting to them and trigger some memories so we go straight to the uh, BGS memories and what I'm looking at now and I hope you can see it as well is an aerial view of Boston Grammar. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Yeah and you can see that there are various um, bits of text on there uh, which relate to bits that um, I want to go through with you uh, and I'm going to go first of all to your video. If you remember um, um, you started off your journey from Corsham, um, well, actually from uh, the National Motor Museum, uh, but on the way to uh, your first sea trip from Hull, you stopped at Boston Grammar School. And if you remember, we, we drove into the school playground. So now I'm going to share that bit of journey with, um, with you and with our audience. So here is Babushka. I can look around, I can see you driving it there. Um, you're going into the, the playground and this will be familiar with a, a lot of people. And I can remember playing uh, football in the playground with, uh, with one of my uh, schoolboy heroes, which was Chris Gedney at the time. Um, and now, now we've uh, finished the video, uh, there you are. Uh, talking to the the school children. You remember that day when that was in July? I certainly do. Yeah, so you were... I remember very much the um, the parade ground as it was. It was the parade ground, yes. I, I wasn't in the um, in the army cadet bits. Were you, were you in the army cadets? No, but I had I had great joy being slightly um, not interested in the uniform game, that when the school um, produced a um, production of Chips With Everything by Arnold Wester, 
I was uh, given the part of a chap called Corporal Hill. Right. And uh, in order to help me become the drill uh, corporal for uh, the post of Corporal Hill, I had gone up to um, Cranwell and been taught to shout at people very loudly who were marching about. And in those days, and you may remember this, um, the, there were three branches of the Army Cadet Force in uh, the grammar school. So they had an Air Force group, and they had an Army group, and they had a Naval group. And it was a deep joy for me that I was allowed to shout at them and make them march and turn and stand for attention in that very place that you have the photo. Well, um, I, I, I can picture in my mind the teacher who was in charge of the cadets and thinking about it, it's maybe my memory that's playing tricks, but thinking about it, he, he reminds me now a bit like Mr. Mannering in... <laughs> He was, he was the epitome of Mr. Mannering, and he used to teach me maths. And what was his name? Can you remember? I can. His name was... I can see him now, bless him. I can see him no, now. I can't on, it will come back to me. It will come back to me. Yeah, okay. Well, it will come back to you in a minute, but... Um, you remember every, I don't know whether it was every year or every couple of years, we, uh, we used to have our school photograph taken. Do you remember? And everybody would come in the playground and they would have a camera right. that, would, that would pan around the group. And yep. some, some kids tried to run quickly from one end to the other so that they were in the picture twice. Oh, maybe it was very fun. common in those days. To yes. try and see yourself twice in the same photo. Ex exactly. Uh, and, and on the picture there, you can see the guy with the camera there, Pete Sharman. I'm going to be uh, interviewing him tomorrow, and hopefully he can share some of his memories uh, with us. Uh, but what I want to do now, before we go into the assembly room and watch your video, we just want to go into one of the some of the uh, rooms at school that you'll be familiar with. Did you ever spend any time in the library? Yes, um, it wasn't quite so um, modern, although the, the, the main fabric of the building is the same. I, I actually took my new family there and uh, we had a walk round. And in my day and your day, I'm assuming, it was a much more old fashioned setup and layup uh, than it is now. Yes. Um, with the lovely stained glass window and um, very kind of formal layout of benches. And uh, one of the things that I rather like is that when I turned up at Babushka and met you there, that they presented you with this lovely um, uh, framed uh, picture of the original school, of which yes. obviously this is art. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that was fabulous. And of course, in our day, we, we didn't have this, did we? We didn't have the IT area. We didn't have computers at all. Um, I mean, a slide, a slide rule was about the limit of um, a slide rule. And it was even in the very early days of uh, calculators. And you couldn't really call them pocket calculators because they were about, about the size of a desk, weren't they? Yeah, and, and the other area thing that I didn't um, really venture into is the museum, which is uh, at the end of the IT section. Did you ever go in the museum? I visited it, but obviously in my day, that's where we went to collect the milk. Yes, yes. Uh, I see the Old Boys Association Museum, and I say... I'm not sure who's on that picture there, but you can't really see the, the detail. But, um, um, you know, I, this was a, a, a great experience for me to be able to go and visit some of the places that I, um, I was familiar with when I was at school and even some places that I, you know, I had no idea existed almost. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go back to the aerial view and just have a look at 
uh, one or two other places within the, the, the school. Um, so I'm going to go to the, the quad, the quadrangle, um, and which is now a little bit different from what it was in our day. Uh, so there you can see the, the, the library, um, and then there was a, a corridor down either side, but this new development wasn't there in our day. There was just a, the quadrangle was a lot bigger. Um, so this kind of walkway in between the, the two corridors has been built since our day. Um, and if you go into there, uh, you can, um, well, what I'll do is I'll nip into the, the corridor because it was this corridor that was really quite uh, significant to me because this was where along this side wall here um, this is where they put the team sheets up for the school football team uh, and I always always hoped to see my name on the school football team and this is where they were pinned up um, and I seem to recall further along this corridor it may be about here or it may be a bit further down the corridor we had um, art classes uh, do you do you remember Banger? Um, oh, Banger Grimble. Well, Banger his Grimble. son, yes. his son was in my in my class for a period of time. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, I didn't have that pleasure, but uh, I remember. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the great sadness for me is that um, not being someone who was academic at the time, I quite liked art, and therefore I I was quite. I had a bit of an appreciation of old Banger Grimble and his, his cardboard tubes. And yeah. um, if you weren't paying attention or you weren't listening uh, or you were talking, then, you know, it was a rather a nice feeling to see this cardboard tube bang onto the table to just bring you back to where you should have been. Yes, yes. Oh, happy days. Yeah, we're going to go over to the reception now, um, and uh, remember that's uh, where we uh, we went and we met the headmaster there. Um, uh, we've just actually come from the corridor that we were just looking at, uh, but this is the the reception area as it is now, and of course it didn't exist at all um, in our day. In fact, I can't remember that there was such a thing as a reception. Um, no. I've no, I, I can't remember. I know that the um, the, headmaster, the headmaster in our day was Sid Ricketts, I presume, um, and and his offices were uh, down the corridor where you come in from the playground to go past the library and down the corridor. He's, I remember his office was on the right hand side. The one that someone bricked up. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, happy days. I'm not sure who that was. I'm sure you had nothing to do with it. Uh, but uh, nothing. No, no, nothing at all. Nothing at all. Well, what a great idea. Yes, absolutely. Well, now we're going to go into the assembly hall because this is the main event, really. We're going to have a look at your, your video, which will be shown um, on basically on the stage where all the masters were. Um, and um, we can continue our conversation while the video is playing, hopefully. Uh, so if we go into the assembly hall now, and you see your video playing. I have to say, you did a great job of this uh, video, Chris. Well, you played a great part, though, David. Let's not be, uh, let's not... Uh, the good, the good thing is that uh, while this video is playing, you, you can also, if you lose interest in the video, you can look round um, the assembly hall as it is now. But I'm sure people will want to pay attention to this video because uh, it re you've really done a good job of it. ...along the highways and byways. The Austin 7 on tour. But all 7 users are not so carefree. I love this music and the old style of the uh, interviewer. 
inspired by these people you know I remember saying right even before you set off you were talking about to go to Havilland and Hector Macquarie and it's good that you were able to uh, include them in your video well, I think it's just me trying to prove the um, incredible power and uh, the history of the Austin 7 yes and they inspired you, and I think, um, you know, you, you were... Well, this bit now out. is really rather important, because the you idea came to people for so years to come. Here when I was in Paris in 2016, that the Rugby World Cup was about yes. to come along, and I could drive to Russia, which I'd always wanted to go back to, and there we have a photo of when you and I were on a school visit with Gert Roman and who were those naughty boys? And we all came home. Do it, it just turned it down the sound a bit, Chris. So, can you still hear the sound okay? Just about, yeah, yeah. That's great. What a fantastic journey, right the way across uh, Siberia, uh, what an amazing adventure. I know in this uh, part of the uh, video, you, you are really just only uh, covering the, um, the bit to Moscow. That's and right. This is where you uh, had your official uh, launch at the National Motor Museum. Yes, and, yeah, and you very right kindly, uh, that's right. And you now appear. There you go. And we met up there. Yeah. Actually, I was quite flattered that they, uh, uh, the, the television program used uh, quite a number of the video clips that we recorded um, over the uh, over the period of your journey. Well, uh, I think as I have spoken to you about, um, I I cannot tell you how impressed I was by the friendship and support um, I was shown in Russia and the fact that they were so interested in what I was doing even yes. though I was an Englishman that they wanted to put it on their national news so here we are in the playground again so a lot of these shots are ones that we uh, we took together while you were at the school And that's the whole idea of a watch party, really, is that you and I are watching this uh, movie together. Um, and um, because I'm um, uh, recording it, um, recording this live uh, event, uh, it also means that other people will be able to uh, watch it uh, with us, hopefully, uh, live. But even those who miss it uh, will be able to go into the, the assembly hall whenever they want uh, via the internet and they will be able to see what we're watching now. Fantastic. And now you're getting say, onto the ferry and the start of a really time. big adventure. What I, have, what I have to say is that having stood on that very stage many times in my uh, career at the Grammar School, it uh, brings back great memories. Yes. And I'm sure, you know, over the, well, um, over the coming weeks and months, especially now uh, with uh, coronavirus, we, um, you know, we, we won't be able to go out and meet in groups of people. So, um, you know, if you want to put a, um, uh, that angle on it and um, people will have less opportunity to be entertained 
so they might be more inclined to come and watch your your video. Uh, you know, even <laughs> what <before>. you <laughs> they, they can they can go into the assembly room and watch your video. Yeah. If they're really, no, I, I really just, the reason that I created this was was because um, I think these kind of technologies will help people to connect with each other when they can't meet physically. They Very can good. still share memories. They can watch videos together. Um, I don't, in, you know, wherever they are in the world. And I'm sure yeah. you know maybe uh, people like Pete Milson. Who was uh, on that trip with us? Um, I hope he'll be watching this. Um, and George Danby, I think he was George Danby on the trip. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, I think he was. No, I I was a fairly um, young member of the party. So all the drinking and the womanizing has nothing to do with me. They look very nice sweets. <laughs> I can be hungry. They were lovely. I, I couldn't believe that they actually had sweets like that. These two people have a, they're rebuilding an office in seven and they met me and took me around their area and then blessed them later on, sent a petrol pump when I needed a petrol pump. And I do notice today that Finland, for the third year running, has been uh, voted or selected as the best place in the world to live. And they were lovely people. I must say, I, I really enjoyed watching the video because there were there was a lot of, and although I saw a lot of your videos and pictures, there were a lot of stuff that I hadn't seen before. Um, and so it was great to see some of that stuff again and um, and some new stuff as well. Well, I thought that I wanted to uh, um, put together something that would have particular importance to the audience who were looking at it, rather than it being something yeah. that was not interesting. So uh, I've done this little presentation really for people who perhaps weren't interested in Austin 7s and driving, but might be interested in the problems. There we have one now with the petrol pump that leaked and I couldn't get another one. And I mended it with an epoxy glue and me and my little man Arthur. And uh, now we had a great time. I, I, I want to try and put the whole thing together in this kind of form really, probably in three or four sections. Um, just so people don't get too bored and uh, present, you know, what it is to have an adventure in an old car and how that old car gives you the opportunity to, to open doors socially r wherever you go. And I mean, that's why I put the name Serendipity of the Seven, because everyone I met was really kind, really helpful, really supportive, and the car played a great part in that. Yes, it's, it's very stirring music, which means that I can hardly hear what you're saying. So uh, what, what we'll do is when, uh, when the video finishes, we'll have a chat about some of the, the highlights and, uh, of this uh, video. So I'm presuming that was uh, Helen filming you and Arthur in the car. This would, must have been in um, St. Petersburg That's or going, Leningrad, as it was. Yeah, uh, St. Petersburg. And we were met by a friend of Ilias. Yes. Um, who then uh, took Helen to allow us to do a little bit of film uh, of the car, which we couldn't normally do. And uh, you're coming up now to um, my wife's almost favourite picture. Yeah, it looks and very good. I mean, the music is fantastic. <laughs> very glorious. Yeah, I, I think you did a great job putting this uh, video together. Yeah, but it took me about ten times longer than it takes you.
And of course, we were in St. Petersburg. We went to, to Leningrad on the way back home. Um, Interesting vehicle that is. <laughs> That's the best Austin they've got. Yes. And there he is, look, stood on yes. top of it. And we saw him. We saw him in his mausoleum in Moscow. Yeah, we did. We? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is the rugby club in St. Yeah. Petersburg who have been going for many years, but they can only ever compete with um, 13 people uh, or in um, seven side tournaments, which they have been Russian champions. So I gave them a donation that I've been collecting and uh, they gave me a flat and uh, they're lovely, lovely people. Just like a small rugby club in England. And then we had a problem. You got some very dirty fingernails. Yeah, you've got a bit of wind noise on the microphone there, Chris. Yeah. I did this bit because I wanted to show the kind of uh, traditional um, Russian houses, which are obviously made of wood. Yeah. Some better than others. And some of them, even, Arthur really appreciated because they sold Hamburg uh, We were then met by a dental nurse, a friend of Indian, in Tver, and this was one of the winter palaces that went from Moscow to St. Petersburg. There's some lovely pictures here. Look at that, Austin 7 overtaking a larder. Yeah, the first car you overtook. <laughs> no, I passed many others, but they're all stationary. Getting close to Moscow now. Yep. And there we have a photo when we were there Very good. when we were young. And that's how it is now. There we are, Red Square, St. Basil's Cathedral, the number one car. 
Bruce Seven. <laughs> and I was James Bond. <laughs> well, that, that, that was uh, fantastic, uh, Chris, and I, I really enjoyed watching that. And I'm, I'm sure everybody who watches this recording and our conversation will, um, uh, will uh, get some pleasure from that as well. I mean, there's lots of different um, incidents on that journey that are, are memorable and, and things that stuck out in my mind. I mean, the help that you got from those people in, in Finland. What were the name of, was it Stray Cats, the name of the group that you sang with in that little hut? Stray Cats, yeah, yeah, that's right. They were, they were just a little group going to a folk festival. Yeah. And uh, they were, they were lovely. We met them because we were living in these little wooden huts, these chalets. And uh, I sang to them and they sang to me. And it was just a wonderful thing. Absolutely wonderful. And and the owner of that chalet didn't 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 he help to uh, to sort out fixing your petrol pump and get it sent to the Russian that border? Was, uh, they were no, they were the two guys that were on that picture, right? Um, uh, in Portville, and um, they eventually bless their cotton socks because they were worried that I wouldn't be able to mend the petrol pump. They actually shipped the petrol pump from which I still have because I haven't sent it back yet because I must do because it's still in the car I've got to take that one off and send it back to them because they actually sent it to me by a system of multiple um, buses so that I got it before I entered Russia yeah so, uh, you, so yeah. I mean that, that was an incredible act of, uh, of well generosity and and kindness, which has been repeated all the way through your journey, hasn't it? I think, I, I, you know, from my personal point of view, over a few various adventures that I've been on, you know, people will tend to treat you as you treat them. Mm. And that if you're honest and you're open and you're caring and you're considerate, then most of the time that's what you'll get back. And I yes. think my little trip proves just that. Because yes. many people felt that I was stepping into a slightly difficult situation. So some people thought I would never make it. And some people said originally they'd like to come and then they decided they thought it might be too dangerous, too difficult, too impossible. And they decided they didn't want to take that uh, risk. It was a step too far. And I'd like to think it's just proven that, um, you know, Generally, normal people in all countries are honest and they're kind and they're caring. And we have to be very careful about what our perceptions are of a country or what we're given by the media. Mm. Yes, I, I, I agree with you. Um, I, mean, I, I also say that, um, you know, today, in today's life and today's society, with all the technology we have and everything else and the way, the way that life is, the modern day adventures like, like yours um, are really quite unusual. Uh, when people talk about uh, adventures and driving around the world and all this sort of thing, most of the time they're talking about uh, using uh, motorbikes and cars that are modern uh, designs and so they are much more reliable but to go in uh, to go across that distance in a car as old as yours um, I, I must admit that I did worry for you before you sent out on your your journey I, I, I thought that you would have needed um, uh, support, you know. So I, I really applaud and admire you for the courage that you had in taking this journey um, and proving that it, it can be done even in today's modern society. Um, and it proved a lot of things, um, not least the generosity and kindness uh, of people that you met on the journey and the fact that many of these garages that you had working on your car they wouldn't accept a penny for the work that they did on the car 
Uh, and in yeah. particular, and I'm, I'm sure we'll, you know, this is going to be the first of perhaps a number of different videos covering the whole of your journey. But uh, the, you know, the, the critical point when the wheel came off uh, near, was it Magotcha, somewhere like that, that the wheel came well, off? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and um, it just sheared off you on three wheels, you had car to be recovered. Um, and people work through the night to get it fixed for you. Um, exactly. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing uh, adventure. Um, and it's one that should be shared, I think, with many different people because it will it inspire future generations. And also, in this time of coronavirus, uh, help to entertain us all and uh, make us smile. <laughs> so, so, well, so. so well, well done you um, I, you. I'm going to go back to the, um, uh, the aerial view now um, are there any bits of um, the grammar school or the um, all the bits that I've included in this current version um, of the thing I've got uh, did, you, did you used to go to the Odeon at all oh yes you Saturday did Saturday morning Saturday mornings, preference it was. And that's what it looks yeah, like now. That, that's where the, <laughs> that's where the Saturday is. morning, Saturday morning cinema, preference yes. to go in. Yeah, so, I remember it well. Yeah, I, it was the Mickey Mouse Club. Um, and uh, I, my parents used to get rid of me on a Saturday morning, so I used to go there. And the thing that always struck me was that I was... Um, in a way, always a little bit surprised when it was still light outside. I expect it to be dark. <laughs> <laughs> but there were some great adventures there. Um, and uh, just going a bit further that. down down the street, um, you've got the, the uh, Custom House Quay. Um, you've got the old Shodfriars building. You know, all of these, um, all of these places were were familiar to us in our in our younger days and um you Indeed. know bring, bring down that that must be blackfriars lane down there sorry that was blackfriars lane wasn't it was it blackfriars i thought it was shodfriars lane oh maybe shodfriars mm. yeah because anyway, uh, Boston, yeah. Boston united's ground used to be called shodfriars lane yeah yeah um and, and down the back of there there was a uh, in my time there was an archaeological dig at the back at the back of there. Yes, it used to be the uh, there was an art centre and a little theatre down there, wasn't there? Well, that that's actually just um, just a, the, on on the previous picture. Um, that was uh, this is the place you're thinking about uh, there. I think is where the theatre was. Yeah, but um, Black Friars, was, I think that was Blackfriars. Black yeah, that was yeah. Blackfriars. Yeah, Shadfriars, where they have the prison. Yeah. Yes, that's where the Pilgrim Fathers were imprisoned because um, they that's tried right. to yeah. uh, they right. tried to set off from was it Fishtoff Creek originally, and they were yeah, brought yeah. back, and then they made their way over land. Um, they eventually left on obviously, as most people know, on the uh, on the Mayflower from uh, from Plymouth. But Shodfriars yeah. Hall is um, in process of hoping to get some funding to do some renovation. They've already had a bit of uh, lottery funding to put a cafe in there, but that's really got a fantastic history of, it, of, of its own. But if we if we look at um, you know there, there's a stump, you know you've got the marketplace of five lumps, just so many memories, um, uh, so many memories there. Um, over the years. I'm going to be adding to this over a period of time, but um, I just wanted to have something to share with you um, and also to share with all those people who uh, would be disappointed that you uh, that the old boys dinner was cancelled and they wouldn't have a chance to hear from you in person. Well, if we do this as no, a... Really nice. I mean, for me, it's really wonderful that you have the... Um, the skill, the technique, and the determination to do this kind of thing, um, and you know it's lovely because you know if you imagine that what we kind of went through in the sixties at that school, 
have made us what we are now, one way or another, yeah. and that you have been able to uh, put this together to allow people to look at that kind of history. Yes, um, and as long as people get enjoyment from that, that's really what it's all about. Um, and as I said to you, I, I'm, I'm going to be chatting with Pete Sharman uh, tomorrow, um, get some, uh, some of his memories, um, and then what I will do is put it together as a video, which, which we can use as a watch party. Uh, it can be posted on YouTube, um, but for me, that one of the things that's important to me is, is that the fact that I've created something that people, what, there is a website that people can go and explore this for themselves. It's not like no. watching a video. So just like I've selected BGS memories and different parts, people yeah. will be able to navigate the, that themselves. I'm going to send you a link uh, to that uh, web page so you can have a crack at it yourself. Uh, they still, you. The technology is still not, not perfect. Um, no. And but on, how, how amazing it is. How amazing. Absolutely amazing. It, 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 it is. That. But I mean, again, it, it needs someone with the enthusiasm, the technical ability like you to pull it off. I cannot do that. No, no. But you can drive across Siberia and I couldn't do that. You can make a good zebra. No, I can get... And, I can get beaten with Bert's wings by a large man called Yuri as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think you enjoy that rather too much, Chris. So it's probably on that on that note. It's probably time to uh, uh, to, to to end the uh, recording um, before it yeah, descends okay. into something that's not intended to be. So, <laughs> all right, Dave. Well done. Well yeah. done.